Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am Stephanie Rublitz and I am so excited because today is the kickoff for the So Ask Me Anything vlog hop. And it is So Ask Me Anything about scrap busting. Okie doke. So if you didn't see my little video a while ago announcing the vlog hop, um, Today's video will be put on a playlist with a whole bunch of other YouTube sewing creators. And we are all gonna be showing our favorite tips for scrap busting. Now, if you didn't see the last So Ask Me Anything vlog hop, I'll link it below. Um, and it was just an opportunity to get to know and discover a whole bunch of new sewing vloggers. It was very speed dating in its style because we were just asking questions and getting to know people. But this year, no, this year, but this time we are focusing on a theme, which as I mentioned is scrap busting. And I am excited because I finally get to use this. Now, typically on my channel, I focus on wardrobe sewing. And so even though it was one of my new year's resolutions to learn how to um, sew baskets and stuff like that, I wasn't gonna show it on my channel because it didn't really fit with my regular sort of content. Um, but I feel like this being the So Ask Me Anything challenge, I can maybe like bend my rules a little bit. All right, so I have here some cotton cord. Uh, it's sash cord. And I think it's often used to like hold the weights inside of sash windows and other various hardware. I, I don't know. I don't actually know what else it gets used for. But anyway, I know what I'm gonna use it for. I'm going to make... I'm gonna make a basket or a mat. See, here's my thing. I really wanna learn how to make the baskets. I think they're super cute, but if I made just like, even one like little area rug mat type thing, then I could like easier do the math and figure out how much square footage I get out of one roll of this, which I think would be good information to have. No, I'm going for the basket. I'm doing the basket, okay. So uh, this is 3 16 inch cord and I've got a hundred feet of it. Um, and I, I encourage you to like, check around for it because if you're buying it in like a macrame store or something like that, or some kind of like specialty store, the price might be a little bit higher. I have linked it below for your convenience if you just find ordering it easier. Um, but you know, like also check your local hardware store if you're looking for the best price. Um, I think for this, I'm in Canada and I paid, I think $11 for the 100 feet. Um, it was 11 or 12 bucks. So. We are gonna get into how to make some cute little baskets out of this and how to incorporate our scraps. Oh! <laughs> All right, first things first, I'm gonna use jeans needles. That's what I had on hand for a thicker, more sturdy needle. You could also use a leather needle. You just want something that's gonna be a bit stronger and really sharp. Now, before I went on to any big projects, I did some test pieces just to, to see what it was gonna be like. Um, now, I did notice that I really had to make sure that the first few turns, I was really being careful to get a nice, tight corner. Um, otherwise, your piece kind of ends up looking like a dog bone shape <laughs> instead of a bowl. Now, the other part was I started turning this too soon. And so when it was um, starting to come up, it was sort of getting stuck and having to fold underneath my, um, my presser foot arm. So I realized that I needed my flat piece to be a lot bigger before I started turning it. This was the second little piece. I wanted to play around with some decorative stitches. I don't have a ton of decorative stitches on my machine. Most of them um, were really not fun around the corners. Um, so if you were gonna do a decorative stitch, I would wait until your piece is larger um, and otherwise stick to a zigzag stitch. Now this one um, baseball stitch, which I can't think of the actual name. <laughs> I always call it the baseball stitch. I'll look it up before I finish editing. That one looked pretty cool. So that might be one that I try, but again, I would wait until my piece is bigger so that I don't have to take it around tight corners. This was my first like actual bowl just to see, to practice, you know, wrapping some scraps around and um, yeah, just sort of playing with it all over. And I was really happy with how it turned out. My daughter wants to claim it. I made this little loop for the end just for something to do with it. Uh, and yeah, I was quite happy with how that turned out. So give yourself some time to practice and makes a difference. I did have this little piece of my scrap sort of fold the wrong way around. So I know in the future that I really need to be careful when I'm using scraps to make sure that I fold that in and I'm mindful of it when I go back around um, in my next round to make sure I'm not sort of making a mess. 
All right, so I pulled a bunch of scraps that I had and I did kind of two color palettes. One I'm calling neutrals and friends and the other is an assortment of reds. Um, some from a men's shirt refashion I did, some from my Christmas dress, some just leftover quilting cotton, but I couldn't decide which one I want, so I did what all people do nowadays when they're indecisive. I took it to the gram and asked everybody on Instagram what they thought I should do. And they decided it's gonna be neutrals and friends. So let's get started. Now I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and my ruler, and because I've never done this before, I really wanna experiment with what is kind of the nicest size of strip to wrap around the rope. So I'm gonna cut some of these at a half an inch and some of them at one inch, just to see what I like the best. In the end, I did like the half an inch strips. Um, they obviously were a little bit less bulky and um, I just found they were easier to wrap. So that was my preference, but go ahead, try different ones, see what works for you. All right, let's talk about starting off your first corner. You want that corner to be super tight and you want the end of your rope to be on the left-hand side. If you start with the end of your rope on the right-hand side, you're gonna have to turn it into your machine and that's gonna cause you problems because when you go to lift it up to get your bowl effect, um, you're gonna be lifting it inside the arm of your machine and it's just not gonna work very well. So here I am, I'm using my awl and I'm really just pinching that first corner um, to make sure that I get it super nice and tight. And then once I get that done, um, I'm gonna just run my zigzag down and I've got my tension turned up a little bit on my machine too so that it really kind of helps suck the pieces together. Once I get to the end of my rope where I have to turn it again, I'm going to keep my needle down on the side that I'm turning towards, so on the end of my rope right now, um, and I'm just gonna keep lowering my foot and raising my foot just so that I can sort of get around that corner. The first few corners are the worst, um, but after that they kind of round out a bit and then they're much easier and you don't have to be like so picky about making sure that they're nice and tight. Now I'm gonna start wrapping. I just, I don't know, I like to get it started before I start wrapping my scraps around just because then I'm not adding like an extra layer of finickiness to it, but that really is dependent on your own level of patience. If you wanna wrap it right from the beginning, you go ahead. I almost feel like it would actually be easier to get your um, your first round done, like that, that center double cord, wrap that and then start wrapping around. And I think that might be what I try next time. Now I'm just using a little plastic clip here to hold my scrap together so it doesn't unravel on me. And that way both of my hands are free to feed my work under the machine. All right, now it really just is as simple as you keep wrapping and you keep sewing. And I'm gonna make this into a big basket that I would like to make for taking to the farmer's market. Um, I see lots of people with their fancy produce baskets and they are crazy expensive. So um, yeah, this is gonna be my little produce basket. Okay, so here I've got to the end of my first piece of scrap and you know what? I played around with making sure that the new one was tucked underneath the old one or not worrying about it and really it didn't make a difference. You can just roll your first one and then start rolling your second one on top of it. It's just that easy. Okay, so as you can see, I've progressed quite far. I do want to play around with just having some naked rope on my basket as well, because I also like the look of that. But for the bottom of my basket, because this is going to be a basket that I take to the farmer's market, um, I really want it to not be white. So I'm going to start taking this thing that looks like it could be a floor mat, which it could, and I'm going to make it into a basket. So all I got to do is lift my side so that my next row starts getting sewn on at a bit of an angle. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my work turned on its side to carry on and do the sides of the basket. I'll be honest, the size of this project got a little sort of unwieldy at times. Um, I don't know if I would make another one this big again. It wasn't, wasn't as fun as making the little bowls. Okay, so I need to put some handles on this thing. So I've gone from where my center, um, like my beginning rope is, and I've marked out the centers of my basket uh, from there out. And I've measured it too, just to make sure that I am actually putting pins at my centers. 
and then I've measured out from my center point. I sort of picked a fairly arbitrary. I kind of wanted my handles to come up in thirds. So each of my handles will come up a third of the way from my center point, and then I will have no handle on that middle third because both handles are going to be brought together, sort of like um, a shopping basket that you would see in the grocery store. And I'm just marking this with pins so that I kind of know where everything has to go. So I want my handles to come across the top of the basket like this. So I just, it's really a matter of playing around and seeing how high you want your handle to come up. What's going to be comfortable for you to carry. This is where it's so total. Well, I mean, the whole thing is so totally personal. Um, you just have to play around with it and see what works for you. Okay. So you can see that I have created my handles. And I think I did three layers on my handle. So once I had sort of dragged my rope across the opening, then I just carried on going around that as I did with the whole basket. And I made sure that I backstitched a whole lot um, where that's pulling away from the basket because that's going to carry a lot of weight. And I think I am actually going to go back and reinforce that in a minute. But first, let's talk about what we're going to do with the ends of our rope. So you can see I have the end of my rope that is hanging off of one of the center points on one side of my basket, which means I had to restart another section of rope on the other side to do the other handle. And you can see that right here where I just kind of started one and then went around and made, created my handle with the same kind of basket um, looping that we've done so far. I did a ton of zigzagging back and forth there just to give it some extra stability. And then I have my other end of my rope coming off of the other side. So let's deal with the ends of these. All right, I'm just gonna squish this down. I mean, that's a great thing about this. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen to it. So for the end of my rope, I'm just putting a little dab of hot glue just to keep it from, um, from fraying on me. I mean, absolutely, if you had some like no fray glue or whatever, like kind of use whatever you have on, t on hand that's going to stand up to wear and stand up to washing. All right, so once the end of that is done, I am going to create a little curl. And I think it'll just be a cute little detail. There, something like that. Yeah, that's cute, right? That's what we're going for. All right, so I've gone and threaded a needle and I put that through. My knot is hiding under where that little curl is gonna be so I don't have to worry about that being visible. And I'm just gonna start in the center of my swirl there and I'm just gonna start stitching that to my bag and I'm gonna follow the swirl all the way around. I do find for this that using the silicone thimbles is really useful because it is such a thick material that you're using, it's hard to kind of pull your needle through it. So um, I do find that these reduce finger fatigue really well. So I'll make sure I link some down below if you wanna check them out. I don't know why at this point I'm not thinking that it would be a smart idea to pin my swirl. <laughs> um, I'm just relying on my hands to hold it steady. And then, oh, look, I finally kind of clue in and go, yeah, I should throw a couple pins in here. All right, once I'm done my swirls, I have these little pieces of scrap pig skin um, that I stole from my husband. He does leather working. And I've got some matching thread here. If you don't have leather kicking around or you don't like using leather, you could absolutely use some denim or some stronger fabric or double up some fabric. And all I'm gonna do is fold those and I'm going to put them right where my handles come off of my bag. This is gonna give me the opportunity to stitch through several rounds of rope so that it's not just that one sort of back and forth zigzag seam that's holding my entire handle on. It's the weight of the what's in the bag will actually be distributed along several rows. So I'm going to fold my pigskin over the edge after I get my needle and thread in. Again, I'm hiding my knot underneath the pigskin. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that I have a stitch coming through each and every single layer of rope. In hindsight, I should have gone back and waxed my thread because it was knotting up on me and being infuriating. So if you do this, wax your thread or soap it, one of the two. All right, I'm just gonna stitch all the way around and then that will be done. Okay, here it is. I am so excited about this. This is my new farmer's market, basket, bag, whatever you wanna call it. I am so stoked and I had so much fun making this. Well, I hope you had as much fun as I did with that. I've been wanting to like make these for forever. And now I can see that probably everything in my house is going to get a new basket. I mean, they're quite a bit 
like cuter and I don't know, more classy than the plastic ones I have all over my house from the dollar store. So I'm probably gonna start working on swapping those out. And I hope that you found a really fun way to use up some of those scraps and keep them from going into the landfill. If you did find this video fun or helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it really does help my channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe below. And that's all I've got for you right now. I will see you next time.